Welcome, welcome, welcome. Here we are back, another episode of Glorious Life on Wheels, where I'm going to show you how to make simple, easy meals on a butane stove, whether you're at home in sticks or bricks, or whether you're out on the road. So come on, today I'm going to show you how to make spinach and chicken casserole on top of a stove. So come on, let's get started. Let me share with you what the ingredients are. Very simple. You're gonna take a can of chicken. I use Kirkland and I drain it and drained, it's about seven ounces. Then you're gonna have three eggs and you're gonna separate them and I'm gonna show you how to do that. You're gonna have a can of cream of mushroom soup or you could even use cream of chicken soup if you want with this. I add about a cup of spinach that I've just broken up with my hands and I take this the, the stem part off on the back but I just leave it on in the middle and then the chicken I do break up you'll see I break it up into kind of smaller pieces because I don't want it in the quite the bigger chunks so this is about how I'm gonna have the chicken then what you're gonna do and then also I have a little bit of butter for the pan and some parsley. I like fresh parsley, but I only had flakes, so that's what I'm gonna to use today. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna separate your eggs, your egg yolk from your egg whites. And since a lot of comments that I'm getting are from people who are saying that they're not experienced cooks and they don't know how to do a lot of this, I'm gonna show you today how simple it is to separate the eggs whites from the egg yolk. You just crack, your egg, the egg white will stay in the shell. I'm sorry, the egg yolk will stay in the shell. And see how the egg white will just fall out? Go back, and then you just put the yolk over here. Then I'm gonna do that again. Each time, just separate my egg white from my egg yolk. Be careful, you don't want to get any shell. If you get any shell in there, just separate it. That one was starting to break a little bit, so I hurried up and put the yolk in there. And that's how you do that. For this recipe, I don't like to just put the egg yolks in like that. I like to beat it up really good. Get it good and beat up. You can just do this by hand, it's not a big deal. But get it all mixed up really beaten up good. Then I'm gonna pour that in there. Then I'm gonna take, oops, and I'm gonna add my mushroom soup. And it's cream of mushroom soup. Just gonna add this in here. Get all the little leftover bit down there. Then when I get that, I'm gonna mix that up. Mix that up really good here. Then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna beat up the egg whites. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. I am just taking and I'm beating this up with a little whisk that I have. And you're probably wondering why am I going to beat up these egg whites. I'm beating up these egg whites because I'm going to fold them in to the mixture that I have there. So I'm going to beat these up till they're pretty stiff. You can, if you're at home, you can do this with a hand blender. But I'm just doing it this with this little whisk and I'll show you how this looks in a minute. All right, this is not quite as peaked as I normally would like it, but it's good enough, and besides, I'm kind of tired of beating with this whisk. But I wanted to use the whisk for people who may not have enough electricity to do it another way. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these egg 
your, uh, I'm sorry, egg whites, and you're just gonna fold them in, slowly fold them in to your mixture. And the reason you're gonna do that, it makes it a little fluffier. The person who told me this and shared this secret with me was my sister friend, Rachel. She told me about when you're making pancakes, if you will beat the egg whites and then fold them into the pancake mix, how it'll make it so much fluffier. So I thought, well, why not try this with my casserole? And that's what I'm doing. Be getting it all mixed in, folded in. And then once you get it all folded in, it takes a little bit of effort to get this all in and see how it's thickening it and fluffing it up. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to add my spinach and I'm gonna gently fold my spinach in and I've got about maybe eh, a cup of spinach here you can add more or less depending on what you want but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be beating this or really stirring it I'm just folding it in gently to get it mixed up so every bite of this mixture will have some spinach in it now I'm doing this stovetop but you can actually bake this in an oven too if you're in a sticks and bricks and you have an oven at 350 for probably, I don't know, maybe about 30, 35 minutes, depending on your oven, how hot it gets. Now this is, you can see the consistency of this. It's nice and thick. And then what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna add my butter to my pan here. Turn it on just to melt it. With butter, you don't wanna heat it up too high because you'll scorch the butter and you don't want the taste of scorched butter. I put about two tablespoons, but actually, you know what, I'm thinking I don't need that much, so I may take some of this butter out of here, but I'm just letting that melt in there and then I'm gonna add this into here. Now I'm going to make it on this pan and this pan is a little bit tricky and I'll show you what I mean. Another pan, let me get, another pan that I have is this is really an omelet pan and it's so much easier if you put it in here, then you one side cooks and then you flip it over and the other side cooks. But I'm making a larger batch today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to flip it over, but I'll, I'll show you. Hopefully this won't be a nightmare. We'll see. Okay, that's, I think I'm going to take out a little bit of this butter because I don't need quite as much. So probably a teaspoon of butter will work. Or even if you want to just do a, um, spray it with uh, the spray. Now I'm gonna pour this into here. And let me get my spatula and get it kind of evenly spread out in here. And I'm gonna turn my gas down to medium, medium to medium low. Get this spread out evenly because I want it to cook evenly. If you have part of it really thick, part of it really thin, then you'll have part of it that'll be done and the other part will be raw. So I'm getting this really nice and even over here. And then I'm just going to let it cook. And we'll come back in a few minutes when I get ready to turn it over. What I'm doing is I'm just separating it a little bit because I'm going to flip it and you'll see. So I want it to be kind of loose away from the edges when I do that. Now, hopefully this won't turn into a blooper, but we'll see. As I said, it really is easier if you do it in the omelet pan. But since I did such a large quantity because I usually give this away afterwards, I did it in this pan. So we'll see how this turns out. All right, we're gonna check this. I'm gonna show you, see how this is kind of 
still a little bit loose, but this is one of those things I should probably say, don't try this at home, but actually I want you to try it at home. But I'm gonna slide this out. See if we can get this slided out. Okay, and then we're gonna turn it over. Turn it over. But you have to make sure that the center is firm enough so it won't completely come apart. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna flip it over. There we go. However, having said that and having it come out where it's not falling apart, I do suggest that you do have a omelet pan and I'll show you this again. I don't know if it's exactly an omelet pan or what kind of pan it is, but it's one that you can just take it here and just flip it over. But I know that in a van, your space is limited. So having all of these accessories is really not an option. That's why I'm showing you how to do it in a pan here. But if you do it with actually just one egg and a small amount of chicken, it would probably be a lot easier. We're gonna go ahead and cover this. And actually it cooked for almost 10 minutes in order to get the center firm enough that I could flip it like that. So we're gonna cook the other side and then we're gonna come back and sample it. Now this is an ingredient that I didn't mention at the beginning, but it's something that my daughter really likes on it. So I add it when I'm making it for her. And this is just some grated cheese. I put about maybe oh, a cup of a grated cheese on the top and let that melt. the last oh, the last few minutes that it's cooking and then what I will do is I would cover that back up and let that cook for the last three or four minutes with the cheese so the cheese can melt on there that really does do a lot for it also you may have noticed I didn't add any extra seasoning and that's because the chicken already has salt in it and the cream of mushroom soup has salt in it, so I didn't want to add any more. I sometimes do add some pepper though, and you can add pepper if that's something you like, or if you want other seasoning in here, tarragon, whatever else you want, you can go ahead and add that in here. And you know what? I also did forget, didn't I, to add my parsley, but you know what? It's just gonna have to stay out this time, but I do usually add parsley. But you know what I say, this is what you get. It is what it is. But we'll check this in a few minutes and then we'll get to the fun part, the tasting. I'll let you know how it turned out. Okay, I think we're ready to turn this off and start to get this ready to plate. Let me just show you what this looks like. Doesn't that look delicious? Absolutely scrumptious. Instead of the chicken, you can just add some fresh mushrooms, some spinach, some other things to it so you wouldn't have the chicken if you didn't want to add the meat. All right, we're gonna plate this up and I'll be back in a second to let you know how it turned out. Okay, time for a reckoning to see how this turned out. Do let it sit for a few minutes before you take it out of the pot and cut it because it needs to gel even a little more and also cool down so you don't burn the top of your mouth. Hmm. Mm. This is really good. We definitely don't need to add any more salt. It is so good. The cheese on top. What I sometimes do also, I was working on this recipe last week. I added some sour cream on top and I also added some chunky salsa. So you could do that. And I also, for me, I added some hot sauce, but I'm just doing it plain and you can dress it up however you like it, but it's just delicious, just not dressed up. Mm. My camera with him could hardly wait to taste it. And he said it was right on. So between him and my daughter, I'm gonna have one more bite, then I'll get to some business here. 
excuse me, sorry, it's just so good. Mm. And you don't need, don't need an oven, don't need electricity. Very simple ingredients. I know that taking it out of the pan was a little tricky and I was hoping it wouldn't be a blooper, but I do recommend if you want to make a smaller portion to use an omelet type of pan. And eventually when I become an Amazon affiliate, when I can figure out how to do that, because I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. But when I can, I'll find some pans that I've used and I like and I'll list them. But again, you can just use a regular skillet or even a little smaller skillet if you use a smaller size. So let's get to some other business. Since I have three of these that I haven't had people contact me about yet, these drainers, which I want to give away, I pulled three more names. And I'm going to give one, actually, so this doesn't keep dragging on, please contact with me within three days or I'll just keep pulling names until I get someone who responds. But the three names that I pulled for the drainer are Ramblings of Sherry, Love to Dance Salsa, and Liz B. Liz B, you're the person who contacted me because you didn't see the first video at first and then you found it so hopefully that identifies who you are Liz B so shoot me an email at glorious life on wheels at gmail.com and I'll make arrangements to get this these sent out to you I'm gonna have to figure out another way to do this in the future because and then I'm gonna have to limit the time frame I think that people can respond so we can just just go on but anyhow again Liz B ramblings of sherry and love to dance salsa contact me so i can get your drainers to you thank you again for watching i know that all of you have other things you could be doing with your time and i appreciate that you took this little time out of your schedule to spend it with me and from the bottom of my heart thank you i'll see you next thursday with another video i was hoping this week that we'd have a guest on a guest um, chef but it didn't work out for her schedule so I'm still working on some other people and that is something that's going to be happening in the future oh also a couple things I forgot I love to do shout outs to other channels I love I think us small channels have to stick together and help each other to grow I came across a channel the other day it's a young lady a girl to me based on my age I consider her a young girl but she actually is a young lady and I think she has the potential to really have a large channel she's doing some really interesting delightful recipes and she's just so humble so I love you to go over her name is Jess random her channel is Jess random but I have a problem and I've noticed some other people are commenting that they're having a problem finding her channel so she commented on my um, video last week on the coffee. So if you go down through the comments and you see her name, Jess Random, you can hit on her picture and that will take you over to, over to her, um, her YouTube. So do go over and check her out and let her know that Glorious Life on Wheels sent you. Also, another friend of mine, Plain Vanilla Grandma, is 12, a measly 12 subscribers away from being at 500, which would allow her to become an Amazon affiliate. And that would really be helpful to her. So can you go on to, go on over to Plain Vanilla Grandma and give her a thumbs up and also just subscribe so she, we can get her over that 500 point. And last thing, last shout out, I found a, YouTube channel that I absolutely love. It's called Becoming Bev. She was interviewed by someone calling 30, called rather, 30 and a wake up. And she has apparently bought a large plot of land in Missouri and she's 
developing it into a campground, has a, a lake, not a lake, I think a little river or stream that you can put a kayak in. She's doing Airbnb, she has campsites, she's doing um, sites for vans and, and RVs. It looks like it's really going to be a fun place. And when I make my trip back east, I'm planning on stopping by there. So check out Becoming Bev. That's it for today. If you want me to give you a shout out, of course, I have to check your channel out first. But let me know and I'll check it out and see. Again, thanks. Bye. May your journey be filled with joy and blessings. Next Thursday, subscribe and like and comment. By all means, comment and tell me how I'm doing. Take care. Bye, friends.